What is going on guys? Welcome to this video. In today's episode, we're going to build an image classification script in Python using TensorFlow and convolutional neural networks. Now convolutional neural networks are the type of neural networks that you use when you're dealing with image data or audio data or whenever you want to find patterns in data. And in this particular tutorial, we're going to use a Keras data set of many, many images. And these images have uh, 10 possible classifications. So for example, we can have images of planes, of trucks, of horses, and so on. And we're going to train our neural network to recognize these. And then we're going to get some images from the internet and feed them into the neural network and see if the classification is right or not. So let us get into the code. So first things first, we're going to need a couple of libraries here as always. So let's run CMD or open up your terminal. I'm going to activate my Conda environment if you have one do this as well. And then we're going to install a couple of libraries. Now the first one that we're going to install is NumPy. Um, so if you have it, we'll say already satisfied. In my case, it says that because I have it installed. Uh, otherwise, it's going to install it. Also, we're going to install a matplotlib because this is the library that we're going to use for visualization of the images. We're also going to install, where is it, pip install TensorFlow. This is the library that we're going to use for the neural network stuff. Also installed in my case. And last but not least, we're going to install OpenCV. So we're going to say pip install OpenCV minus Python. That is, of course, also installed in my case already. So we install these modules and then you're going to import them. So we're going to start with import CV2 as CV, which is OpenCV. You don't need to give it an alias. I just like to do it. Uh, you can then import NumPy as NP, then matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And last but not least, we're going to import some things from TensorFlow. We're going to import from tensorflow.keras. We're going to import data sets, layers, and models so that we don't always have to type tensorflow.keras.models, tensorflow.keras.datasets, and so on. But we also don't have to import all the individual things that we're going to use. So these are the things that we're going to import. And now we're going to get the data from the data set because the data set is already inside of Keras. And the only thing that we need to do is we need to call a load function and then store the data in uh, tuples in training tuple in a training tuple and a testing tuple in order to work with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to say training images and training labels in one tuple and we're going to say testing images and testing labels in another tuple and the data set we're going to get from datasets.cifar or I hope it's pronounced cipher, I don't know, 10 dot load data. And this load data function here returns uh, training and testing data in this exact format. So the images are just uh, arrays of pixels and uh, the training labels are just the labels, for example, plane or bird or cat and whatever. Um, and that's basically it. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to normalize the data. We're going to scale it down because um, the pixels are basically activated from zero to 255. So you have an activation, depending on how bright the individual pixel is, you have a value from zero to 255. Now, what we wanna do here, because it's just more convenient to work with, we wanna scale the data down so that all values are from zero uh, to one, so in between zero and one. In order to do that, uh, since zero is the minimum value and 255 is the maximum value, the only thing that we need to do is we need to say training images and testing images equals training images divided by 255 and testing images divided by 255. I hope this notation does not confuse you here. Uh, the only thing that we're doing is we're assigning the training images divided by 255 to the training images and the same for the testing images here. So it's just a double assignment, you could say. And that's how you get and how you prepare the data. So what we're now going to do is we're going to define a class names list and then we're going to visualize 16 out of all those images uh, from the data set. So the first thing is we're going to say class names equals and here you can put in the class names because in the training and testing data sets, we just have numbers as labels. We don't have a label plane. We don't have a label car. We just have uh, a label one, for example. 
Uh, what we need to do is we need to assign some names to these labels uh, or to these numbers actually. And we're going to do that with this particular uh, list here. And it's important that you keep the order here. So you cannot just uh, pick another order than I'm picking here because they are in the exact right order. So the first thing that is in the labels data set is a plane. Uh, the second one is a car. The third one is a bird. The fourth one is a cat. Then we have a deer. Then we have a dog. Then we have a frog. Then we have a horse. Then we have a ship. And last but not least, we have a truck. So these are the objects that we, we will be able to classify. So the neural network should actually be able to differentiate between a car and a truck or a horse and a deer. And that is not as simple as uh, it is for us humans because a horse and a deer might look pretty similar on an image, depending on the image, of course. And you also need to take into account that the images that we're feeding into the neural network here are not very high resolution. I don't know the exact resolution, but I think it's something around 20 to 50 times 20 to 50 pixels. I don't know, like 28 times 28 or 30 times 30, something like that. I don't know the exact resolution, but it's pretty low and uh, it's not that easy to recognize the individual parts here. However, this is the list and we're going to use it later on, but now we're going to visualize 16 of the images. So we're going to use a four times four grid just to get an overview of how this data set looks like. Uh, so we're going to see four image in range, or actually this is an index, so let's just call it I, four I in range 16. We're going to define a subplot here with math.lib, so plt.subplot, four, four, and I plus one. This basically says that we have a four times four grid, and with each iteration, we're choosing one of those, uh, one of these uh, places in the grid to place the next image. So we're just iterating over these, uh, over this whole grid. Then we say plt.xticks nothing and plt.yTix nothing so that we don't have any coordinate system that annoys us since we're not doing anything mathematical here. Um, and then we're just going to say plt show. So we're going to show the image and we're going to show the training image with the index i. So we're going to show the first 16 images and we're going to use a binary color map here. So we're going to say cmap equals plt.cm which stands for color map and binary. And last but not least, we're just going to say plt.x label. So below each image, we're going to have a label and this label shall be the class name. And which class name should it be? It should be the train labels class name. So basically of this particular index and we're going to pick zero here. So the first element. So basically what we're doing is we're getting the label of the particular image the number, and then we're passing this number as the index for our class list. So if the image uh, label is three, we're going to get cat. Since this is the uh, fourth position, but the third index. So this is how we're going to do it. And last but not least, we're going to say plt.show. And that should be it. This should look fine. Let's see takes a while. There you go. So as you can see, the pictures are not very high resolution here, but you can see, okay, this is a frog. We could see that as well. This is a truck, obviously. I am not sure if I would have recognized this one as a truck, to be honest. This is a deer. It could be anything. This is a horse. This is a bird and so on. Uh, but as you can see, it's not that easy to recognize these animals or vehicles on, um, these images here, at least not of all of them. Like this here could just be, you know, nothing, but it's a deer. Okay. So the neural network will have a quite difficult job in classifying all these images. Uh, but we're going to make it happen and we're going to see pretty interesting results in the end. Now let us get started with building and training them all. And the next step for that is an optional one, but I'm going to do it. It is reducing the amount of images that we're feeding into the neural network. So I'm going to say training images equals training images up until 20,000. 
And then I'm going to say training labels equals training labels up until 20,000. And then we're going to say testing images equals testing images up until 4,000. And then we're going to say testing labels equals testing labels up until 4,000. So instead of training the neural network on the whole data, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick the first 20,000 training examples and the first 4,000 uh, testing examples. We're doing this because it saves a lot of time. And if your computer is not super fast, training a neural, uh, neural network uh, takes a lot of time. So if you want to save time or if you want to save resources, you can just pick the first 20,000. They should be decent, should be enough to make them all quite accurate. Of course, if you want to have the best accuracy possible, the maximum accuracy, what you can do is you can train it on the whole data set, but it takes uh, way longer to do that. So if you have a lot of time or just a fast computer, you ignore this step, you just you know delete this code here. But if you want to save resources, you can just say, okay, I want to train on the first 20,000. If you have a super slow computer, you can also just train on the first 5,000. Of course, the accuracy goes down the less examples you feed into the neural network. Um, but yeah, you can save a lot of time here. So now when we have the data prepared, what we do is we build the neural network. And for that, of course, we just start by defining the neural network as model equals models.sequential. So a basic sequential model here. And uh, the next step is to define the input layer. And the input layer here is immediately a convolutional layer. So we're going to say model.add and we're adding layers, layers.conf to conf to D. And we have 32 neurons here and 3, 3 as, an, uh, as a convolution matrix here, as a filter. Then we have the activation function of ReLU. If you don't know what an activation function is and you don't know what rectified linear unit is, you can check out my neural network simply explained video on YouTube. There I explain how neural networks basically work and what an activation function is and what it does. And we have an input shape of, sorry, input shape of 32 times 32 times three. And here you can see obviously that the resolution has to be 32 times 32 pixels and three color, uh, color channels. So this is what we have here. Oh, what the fuck did I just do? Did I just do a semicolon in Python? Uh, then we have the next layer, which is a uh, max pooling layer. So every time you have a convolutional layer, you have a max pooling 2D layer, which simplifies uh, the result and reduces it to the essential information. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say max pooling, oh, sorry, layers, not layer, max pooling 2D. And here we're just going to say 2, 2. This is the filter. And after that, we're just going to add another convolutional layer. So we're going to say layers dot conf 2D. And this time we're going to have 64. And again, a filter of three by three, an activation function of ReLU, rectify the linear unit. Then one more time, we're going to add a max pooling layer, max, max pooling 2D. Again, two times two, pool size. Um, and then we're going to add one more convolutional layer, final one layers.conf2d and again it is 64 units three times three filter and the activation function is again just rectified linear unit relu and that's the last convolutional layer then we're going to flatten whatever we get out of this so we're going to say okay model.at layers.flatten which is basically just flattening the input, making it one dimensional. So if you have a 10 times 10 matrix, you just make it into a hundred, uh, into a straight uh, layer of a hundred units. So basically just a flattened layer. And after that, we're going to add two dense layers. So one dense layer, layers.dense with 64 units and the activation function is ReLU again. And then we have the output layer, the final output layer that will have, of course, just 10 units. So we're going to say layers 
dot dense and we have 10 units for 10 possible classifications and the activation function here is called softmax softmax just scales all the results so that they add, uh, add up to one so if you have i don't know 50 60 and 70 it will just scale them so that they are percentages and adding up to one so that you get a distribution of probabilities so that you know how likely is it that one particular answer, one particular classification is the case. So this is the full model here. Let me repeat one more time. We have a convolutional layer followed by max pooling, convolutional, max pooling, convolutional. Basically a convolutional layer filters for features in an image. So it will look at, okay, a horse has long legs, uh, whereas a cat has uh, pointy ears or something like that. An airplane has wings and a truck is bigger than a car, for example, it filters out all these features. A max pooling layer then reduces the image to the essential information. Then again, we uh, use a convolutional layer to um, process the result, and we do this over and over again. In the end, we flatten the result. We put one more dense layer of complexity in between uh, the flattened layer and the dense layer, which is the output layer, and in the output layer, we just scale the results so that we get percentages or probabilities for the individual classifications. Then what we need to do is we need to compile them all as always. So we're going to say model.compile as an optimizer. Optimizer as always, we're going to pick Adam. Then we're going to define a loss function and we're also going to pick the one which we almost always pick, which is sparse categorical cross entropy. And then we're going to define a matrix that we're interested in, and we're interested in accuracy only. So we want to know how accurate, accuracy, how accurate is the model. And then last but not least, we can go ahead and fit the model. So we're going to say model.fit on the training images with the training data, uh, training labels, sorry, training labels. And we're going to run 10 epochs. So epochs basically uh, say how often is the model going to see the same data over and over again. If we specify 10 epochs, that means that the model is going to see the same data 10 times. And then we're going to say validation data. Validation data is the training, no, sorry, testing images and the testing labels. So we're going to validate the model with that. Let us take a look at this and just see if it runs. Always takes a time because uh, TensorFlow needs to be imported. Of course, we have the visualization here. And as you can see, it's start training. You can see Epoch 1 is running. You can see it's training on 20,000 examples here. Uh, and this is the accuracy of uh, classification right now, so it's around 30%, which is not that bad considering that you have 10 possible uh, guesses, you could say, or 10 possible classes, and if you were just guessing, you would have a 10% chance of being right. So it has some, you know, knowledge in there. Now it's uh, almost 50%, so we're going to stop right here because it doesn't make sense to fit them all all the time. But as you can see, this is how you build the neural network, and we can train it, and we will train it in a second. What we now want to do before we run the script and train them all is we want to test them all, we want to evaluate them all, and then also we want to save them all so that we don't need to train it every time we run the script. You want to train it once, save it, and then just load it, which is uh, way more efficient than wasting all the resources and all the time for training them all over and over again. So after the fit, we're going to say model, or actually we need some return values. We're going to say loss and accuracy equals model dot evaluate on the testing image images and on a testing labels there you go then we're going of course to print these values i think loss accuracy was the right order i'm not sure but i think it should be loss and accuracy so let's just use f strings here loss equals uh, loss and accuracy accuracy is the accuracy of course then we have these two metrics the loss is basically just a numerical value indicating how wrong our model is how 
how much off it is from the ideal result and the accuracy is just how many uh, or how much percent of the testing examples were classified correctly. And after that, we're just going to say mall.save and we're going to save it in uh, image classifier.model. And later on, what we can do is we can say, okay, model dot, or actually models dot load model. And we can use the same string here, the same name to just load the model. And we can then assign it to the model instead of training it over and over again. So that should be it. We can now run the model or actually run the script and train the model. So it always takes some time because we need to import TensorFlow and that's not that fast. And now as you can see, it trains the model and I'm going to skip the step and get back to you once the model is trained. So now the training is done and as you can see, we have some metrics down here. We can see the loss is 1.01. .01. I mean, it doesn't say a lot because the loss is more like a metric for the computer as I talked uh, about in the neural network simply explained video. Uh, but we can see that the accuracy is 66% and actually you could consider 66% to be quite low. But considering that there are 10 possible classifications and the neural network doesn't even know what a horse is or a plane is, 66% is pretty good for a neural network. Um, so it's a pretty decent accuracy. You maybe get a higher one if you use all the training data and testing data. Um, yeah, you can see here that the image classifier model is up here stored in the same directory. So what we're now going to do is we're just going to get rid of, uh, actually, I think all of this here. Yes. And we're going to say model equals models dot load model. And we're going to say image classifier dot model. So we're just going to load the model that we just trained. And now we're getting into the interesting part. We're now going to take images from the internet, random images of horses or trucks or planes, and we're going to classify them with this model. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Pixabay since there we can find license free images and uh, I don't want to break any laws on my YouTube channel here. So I'm going to use Pixabay and we can start out by looking for images of horses or of a horse. Uh, we should find just a single horse here, maybe an image with less distractions. Oh, this is a good one. This is obviously a horse, so we can download it 6442, save it to the desktop, horse.jpg. Then we can look for a plane. Hope we find one. Ah, oh, this is a pretty clear image of a plane. So we're going to download this one as well. Lane.jpg. And then let's pick one off a car. Hmm. That is one. That is actually the one that I used in my book uh, on computer vision. So let's pick this one. Car.jpg. And last but not least, let's pick, I don't know, a deer, just to see the difference between a deer and a horse. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So go to free download. There you go. Deer.jpg. There you go. We now have all these images on a desktop, but of course they are not in the right resolution. So what we need to do is we need to open them with some kind of... Uh, you know, image editing tool. I'm going to use GIMP here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say, we're just going to say, uh, we have to scale it to 32 times 32 pixels. You can cut it, you can scale it, whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to cut off some parts of the image here so that it's a little bit more quadratic. So I'm going to say crop to selection. Then we're going to say canvas size, no scale image. I think that's it. Um, and we're going to scale it to 32 times 32 scale. And this is the image. It's clearly, clearly recognizable as a horse. So we shouldn't have too much problems here, or too many problems here. Uh, then let's load all of the other images as well and do the same thing. Shouldn't be that hard. 
Uh, this one we can actually, I think we could actually scale that immediately, but let's cut off some of the parts left and right. Image, crop to selection. Then we're going to say again, where is it? Scale image, 32 times 32, scale, bam, there you go. Over right, I'm going to do it very fast for the deer right now. This is a good image of the deer. Image, crop to selection, image, scale image, 32 times 32, scale, over right. And last but not least, the car. Pick this car here. Crop to selection, scale image 32, 32. I'm showing you the full process here. That's it. And this is how we prepare the images. We now just need to load them. Um, okay, we need to click export every time. Are they now done? Okay, the plane didn't work for the plane. Something went wrong. What ran what went wrong? Actually overwrite deer.jpg export overwrite the plane export now it should work there you go we now have prepared the images and we need to load them into the pycharm directory here so we're moving them here and that's it we prepared the images we scaled them down and now we're going to feed them into the trained model now we're going to use OpenCV and NumPy in order to load the images into the script, make a prediction, and then visualize that prediction, or at least print that prediction out onto the screen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to load the image by saying cv.imread, uh, and let us just start with the horse.jpg file here. And the next step is very important because when you load images with OpenCV, when you use the imread function, you load them in a BGR color scheme, so blue, green, red. However, up until now in this project, we've only worked with RGB color schemes uh, or with the RGB color scheme. So all the images that we trained them all on used RGB and also matplotlib when visualizing the data or visualizing the images is going to use RGB. So what we need to do is we just need to convert the color scheme and basically swap blue and red values. So we're going to say cv.convertColor of the image and we're going to use cv.color from bgr to rgb that's it and now we can go ahead and show it so plt im show image and the cmap is plt dot color map dot binary this is just visualizing the image and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a prediction here so we're going to say prediction is model dot predict and here we need to pass a numpy array because our model has a certain structure that it takes and what we need to do here is we need to pass the image in a numpy array so we're just going to say np array and in a list we're going to pass the image and very important since in the beginning we divided all the values by 255 uh, 255 to scale them between zero and one, what we need to do is we need to do this with every input as well. So we're going to divide all the pixels by 255 here. And what we get out of this prediction here is we get 10 activations of the 10 softmax neurons. And what we wanna have is we wanna have the maximum value because this is the most likely prediction here. And we wanna have the index of that prediction. So what we're going to do is we're going to say index equals uh, np.argmax of the prediction. And argmax, what it does is it gives us the index of the maximal value. So one of these neurons will have the highest activation, and with argmax, we get the index of this activation or of this neuron. Uh, and this index, of course, is the same index that we need for the class name. So what we do is we say print f string prediction is. And here we just say class names index. That's it, and it should work pretty well. I hope the classification is right. Let's see. Should say horse, hopefully. Of course, we can then remove this line. Prediction is horse. It worked for the first image. Let's uh, let's just comment out, or actually, let's just delete this part of the code here. 
so the first prediction was correctly it was a horse um then let's try the plane shouldn't be that hard um we need to say i of course used pretty clear images um uh, yeah prediction is plain then let's go for the car actually it's not showing the prediction uh not the prediction but the image so we might need to add a pot show but let's do it after the prediction so now we should get a car Prediction is car. So up until now we have 100%. So last but not least, try the deer. But I guess it will also be correct here. We get probably misclassifications with images that are not that obvious or not that clear. But in this case, it says it's a deer, so it's perfectly fine. And as you can see, the model works. You can play around with it further if you want. You can just go ahead and you know take a thousand images and see what. Uh, you get as a result, you can do whatever you want with it. But as you can see, it works pretty well with obvious examples, with a little bit more tricky examples, with an animal that looks a little bit like a deer and a horse at the same time. Maybe we don't get 100% accuracy, uh, but the results are quite impressive here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and supporting this channel. Also, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to this channel to see more future videos for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.